In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the Mechanic TA24 to identify faults in my customer's Nintendo Switch. Let's begin. A guy brought his Nintendo Switch OLED and mentioned that he was unable to charge it or display it on the TV. This is a common issue, but the solution varies for each case. It requires a detailed inspection of the console to identify the main cause. He said that initially, the HDMI connection wasn't working, and later on, he couldn't charge it. He also mentioned that his sons might have handled the console roughly while putting it into the dock. Let's try to power on the console. As you can see, the console's battery is empty. I found many cases where the tablet and the power supply were fine, but the power plug adapter was faulty. Oh, by the way, this is what I mean about the power plug adapter. Many people use it everywhere. Many non-technical users often mistakenly believe that their game consoles are broken, when in fact, they are functioning properly. Okay, now back to the subject. Let's test the console using a reliable power supply and a USB tester. Normally, the USB tester should beep and show something on the screen, but currently, it is not reacting. Now let's flip the power supply header. And again, it is not reacting. When you face this kind of issue, you need to think critically. We have identified that the battery is depleted. The console responded when the power button was pressed, but it cannot be charged. This could be due to a faulty USB port or a malfunctioning charging chip. And now let's test the console's USB Type-C connection using the Mechanic TA24. Plug the tool to the console's USB port and press the side button to power it on. As you can see, there are several red dots, which may mean a problem with the USB port or other components. We should conduct additional testing to pinpoint the problem. To refresh the testing process, simply flick the side switch to any direction. And the red dot stays. Now let's flip the mechanic tool and retest the USB connection. The red dots keep appearing, and when we flip it, it seems like the red dot moved to another location. But in fact, they stay in the same place. It is because the USB Type-C connection has two sides. When you read the user manual, you will learn that the red OL indicates an open circuit or lack of connectivity, while a red value indicates a short circuit. However, when we compare the values to a non-working console, we can clearly see that there are several abnormalities. Therefore, further inspection is necessary. Okay, now let's tear down this console. In this section, I will use the USB Type-C breakout board like this one, along with the Nintendo Switch schematics by XZZ. Get a multimeter and set it to diode mode. Connect the red probe to any ground point, and the black probe to the test point to observe the value.
After obtaining the diode values from the breakout board, we must inspect those abnormal points. The XCZ platform has detailed schematics of the Nintendo Switch OLED and other stuff. By using the breakout board as a reference, we need to examine the region within the lime-colored box. This is the XCZ platform. Now, I will demonstrate the simplicity of utilizing this tool to identify the component we believe to be abnormal. Let's begin by examining this point. By clicking on that point, we can identify which component is affecting it. Let's zoom out. Find the one that is glowing yellow. And there it is, on the other side of the board. It is a common mode choke, or a noise filter. As a noise filter, there should be connectivity between the sides. And when we click the other side, it affects the capacitor and ends at the P13 USB chip. And of course, it is affecting the HDMI output. So from the noise filter, it connects to the capacitor right here, and it ends at the P13 USB chip which is responsible for outputting the HDMI signal. However, the most obvious irregularity is pin number 9 from the inner row, which should have a direct connection to pin number 21 on the outer row. Upon examining the breakout board, I observed that the diode value between pin number 9 and pin 21 was 2.7 volts, when it should be 0 ohms, indicating no resistance at all. Since the USB port is a mechanical component with no resistance, we can conclude that it is defective in this console. In the XZ schematic, pin number 4 is grouped with pin number 9, number 16, and number 21, all connected to a single resistor. Next, we will examine pin number 8. Again, it is connected to a noise filter like this. Since it is a noise filter, there is connectivity between the sides. And again, it ends at a P13 USB chip. Now, let's check pin number 17. It is affected by the same noise filter, and again, it ends at a P13 USB chip. So, what's next? We will certainly remove the USB port, replace it with a new one, and then test it out. First, let's apply flux to the USB Type-C anchors on the underside of the motherboard. Now, let's solder a low melt solder onto those anchors. I use the Mechanic XW5 solder wire, which melts at 138 degrees Celsius. We need to do this procedure to lower the melting temperature of the factory lead-free solder, which makes it easier to remove the USB port when heating it later. Let's flip the board over and proceed with applying the flux and low melt solder to the top anchors and the outer pins of the USB port. Get a hot air rework station, set it to a temperature that could melt the lead-free solder, and hit the USB port. For your information, the lead-free solder melts at 225 degrees Celsius. But I set my hot air rework station to 414 degrees. There you go. The defective USB port is now removed. Now grab a solder wick and use it to absorb and clean up the old solder debris. Clean the area with IPA or a PCB cleaner. And use a multimeter to verify the connection between pin 9 and 21, as well as pin 4 and 16. Here's the damaged USB port. As you can clearly see, there is one missing pin right there. Before soldering the new USB port, 
let's apply some flux to the solder pads and use the XW5 solder to thin the pads. Then clean the area with IPA. Now get a replacement USB port, apply some flux to the contact pins, and thin it again with the XW5 solder wire. Apply some flux to the solder pads, position the replacement USB port, and then use the hot air rework station to solder it. To ensure flawless soldering, apply gentle pressure to the USB port using a tweezer. And before soldering the anchors, let's recheck the diode values of the USB port using the mechanic tail tester. Hmm, there are still two red dots which are pin number 8 and pin number 17. Let's refresh the testing procedure. And the red dots position are intact. Let's flip the tail tester and see. And the red dots stay. Since the position of the red dots is too obvious, I don't think that the issue is caused by poor USB port soldering. When we go back to the footage at 7.30, we can see that those pins are connected to a noise filter. Therefore, I am confident that the noise filter is damaged. This is the noise filter, and typically, these points should have continuity. I check the console choke filter, and these points are completely dead, with no connection at all. Now let's remove this component. I applied the blob of flux and used the XW5 solder wire to take out the filter. Clean the area with IPA. I extracted a non-good and working filter from a donor board. Now let's carefully position and align it onto the motherboard. Then I use a hot air one to solder it. After replacing the common noise filter, let's recheck the USB port once more. And there you have it, the red dots are now gone. Let's flip the tail tester. Yes, it is now fixed. Next, let's solder the USB port anchors. Now let's proceed with soldering the USB port anchors using a standard soldering technique. Apply flux to the solder pads and use any preferred solder wire. Clean the area with IPA.
Now let's test the charging function. I use the standard USB tester to check the voltage and amperage values. Good, it is now charging. The voltage and the amperage values are normal too. And now let's flip the charger. Okay, awesome. I think we have fixed the console issue. After being charged for some time, the console is now permanently fixed. It can be charged on both sides. And it is capable of outputting HDMI signals. So thank you for watching this video, I hope you like it.